Thank you, Father, for that beautiful prayer. Thank all of you for holding your hands up to, to bless me. That's very powerful. Uh, let me first begin by thanking uh, Sister Eric Marie and the choir. I don't know how many of you can actually get a good look at her when she's doing this, but let me tell you, she's never happier. And what she reminds me of when she's doing it is a basketball coach. There's a lot of this going on. Uh, uh, but she's a great cheerleader, and she did it with probably maybe one practice with maybe a third of the group. And she called a couple audibles, I noticed, Nancy, uh, that Nancy Way, our music director, picked right up. But thank you so much, all of you, for that beautiful music on the show. <laughs> Father Mark, thank you. We've had, I think I've heard four sermons from Father Mark, and uh, every one of them has a real meaning. We appreciate so much that you took on our theme this year and, and worked it into the Sermon in the, on the Mount. You always say something with which our students can identify, and we appreciate that, Father. I don't know if you heard the story, Father, about the young mother who was preparing pancakes for her sons, Kevin and Ryan, and the boys started to argue over who was going to get the first pancake. And the mom saw an opportunity uh, for a lesson from the Sermon on the Mount. And she said to the boys, you know, if Jesus were sitting here, he would say, let my brother have the first pancake. I can wait. And without missing a beat, the five-year-old Kevin turned to the three-year-old brother and said, Ryan, you be Jesus. <laughs> I don't think that's exactly the message that Father Mark was sending us today, but they were only five and three years old, so we'll let them slide. Uh, but thank you for the liturgy. Thank you for this kickoff, not just to the inauguration, but much more importantly, this is a kickoff for Mercy Week um, here at our college. Um, today's gospel from Matthew, for I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. A stranger and you welcomed me, naked and you clothed me, ill and you cared for me, <clears throat> in prison and you visited me. Whatever you did for one of these least brothers of mine, you did for me. I'm not sure there are more powerful words anywhere in the gospel. Whatever you did for the least of my brothers or sisters, you did for me. Kindness is truly the universal language. It's also the language that's been spoken so often by the founders of this institution and in its very fabric to this day. Let me say something about each of those two statements. First, kindness is the universal language. I see it all the time on this campus. I thank all of you um, who are examples of it. We had uh, a young mother on our campus last spring, uh, Mandy Pinkerton, she had a very, very tough spring. Her eight-year-old had brain surgery in the middle of the spring semester. Her sister died unexpectedly. She wrote a beautiful letter when that was all over to thank the faculty, to thank the staff, and to thank her classmates, because she got through that year. Didn't miss a class, and she was just in my office last week. Uh, that's an example of what that message is all about. We had a wonderful example last fall. Our women's soccer team, real tough game, went 94 minutes in a tie game, lost one nothing on a penalty call. Um, when the game was over, uh, they lined up in twos and they went right out to the middle of the field and they thanked the referee who made that call and cost them their game. Uh, great example of what that gospel is about. Um, all the students who helped Charlie Mastovich, who's with us today. Charlie was our 80-year-old star graduate last year. They did our welcome at the graduation. Charlie, like me, doesn't understand everything about computers, but when Charlie needed help, his classmates gave him help. Um, Another example, the six different Sisters of Mercy that came to see me the first day I was here, come to see me often, and I've said this before, by the time the last one left the room and told me she was praying for me, I really started to wonder what I'd done wrong to need all those prayers. <laughs> but I, I see examples of this all over our campus all the time, and I want to thank you for that. Robert Frost once said that poetry is what gets lost in the translation. I hope that these daily acts of kindness, a poetry of the spirit, if you will, continue to replicate and multiply here at Mount Aloysius long after all of us leave. These acts of generous spirits, of kindness, are contemporary examples 
of Matthew's exhortation in the gospel today, whatever you did for the least of my brothers and sisters, you did for me. There's lots of poetry and kindness on this campus, and it's all prayer. And kindness is truly the universal language. Last reflection. Kindness, the central mission in the gospel of today, is also the universal language of the founders of this institution and at the very core of their and our mission. Mercy and justice, service and hospitality, they frame the life work of the order and they are the core values in our own mission statement. We're coming up to Mercy Week when we celebrate the history and emulate the accomplishments of an incredible group of women. They say that imitation is the highest form of flattery, and in the next week we will honor the accomplishments of these Sisters of Mercy by trying to imitate them. At Mount Aloysius, we will celebrate the extraordinary commitment of these women by performing acts of service on our campus and in our community as part of our CLS classes, on our sports teams, in our clubs and organizations. You know there's over 7,000 Sisters of Mercy in the world today serving in 47 countries, in over a thousand cities and towns and villages across the globe. In places like Guyana and Guatemala, Panama and Peru, Chile and China, Uganda and the United States. And of course, where it all started, on Baggett Street in Dublin, Ireland. In America alone, there are 3,684 Sisters of Mercy, another 3,100 associates, and over 950 Mercy Volunteer Corps alums who live out today's gospel every day. The Sisters of Mercy do that by founding and operating over 100 schools from Australia to Belize and from Ireland to the United States, including our own college and 15 others like us in this country. They also live out today's gospel by founding and operating 53 full-service healthcare systems 67 homeless shelters and orphanages, and dozens of long-term care facilities and other social service networks that tend to the needs, as it says in the gospel, of the least of my brothers and sisters. These modern day angels of mercy and justice, of service and hospitality, perform corporal works of mercy on behalf of the poor, the uneducated, the afflicted, and the desperate. Science tells us that you can live about 40 days without food, that you can live for about three days without water, and that you can live for about eight minutes without air. But it is very hard to live even one second without hope. And these extraordinary women who took up the cloth of Mother Catherine Macaulay over 180 years ago have made it their business, their life's work, to bring hope now in 47 countries around the world, in 44 states here at home, and over 500 cities and towns in America. We in this chapel, in this chapel, are among the most fortunate beneficiaries of these extraordinary examples of how to live a life for the least of my brothers and sisters. 202 women have entered the Sisters of Mercy since the community in Loretto was founded more than 150 years ago. More than two-thirds of these women spent some time of their ministry with us on these grounds at Mount Aloysius College, and many others as well. We have over 200 students who've received Mercy Service Grants at Mount Aloysius. Ninety-six of our students have won Mercy Presidential Scholarships. Twenty-nine of them are in the audience today. It is really a remarkable body of work, one that exemplifies the heart of today's gospel and that deserves our praise, our adulation, our emulation. Sister Helen Marie Burns, Sister Nancy Donovan, Sister Eric Marie Setlock, Sister Charlene Kelly, Sister Giuseppe DeBella, Sister Benedict Joseph Waters, Sister Margareta Phillips. Would you all please stand? Sisters, we thank you for showing all of us how to live today's gospel every day of your lives.